Hello everyone, welcome to this video. Now, this is a video about samurai naval warfare. And do you suffer from TikTok retardation? Okay, TikTok retardation was uh, a term coined by me about five minutes ago, thinking how can I make this really complex video short enough for the TikTok generation to listen to? And I realized it wasn't me that was at fault, it was the audience. So if you can't listen for more than 30 seconds, probably switch off now because this is going to be a bit longer. So get your head out of TikTok world, get yourself a cup of tea and a bacon butty, sit back, relax. I'm going to be talking about samurai warfare, but I'm going to be really rounding up people, videos from the three collaborators I'm working with. That is Tadagenji, Samurai Traditions of the Tadagenji, uh, Sengoku Studies and the Shogun. And they're information is in the thumbnail to this video but i'm going to put the links below to their videos now the shogun always outdoes himself he's brilliant at tiktok he's brilliant but so not to take away from nick but scott and um steve and nigeria have done amazing videos this month amazing videos so this is a roundup for march's stuff and um Basically, the Shogun at Nick did an awesome video on seeing samurai warfare in naval hi uh, naval warfare in history. But the other two did some really great long videos with lots of drawings and illustrations about parts of the ships and things like that. As you followers of mine know, I've had to stop doing videos of that type because I'm building a house. So uh, I've just got to get on with talking to you and uploading it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and make this as interesting as possible by going through it in a story-like fashion from my notes from watching all the other videos. So... Here we go. But at the very end, the very end of the video, if you can stay to the end without TikTok retardation getting into your brain, I'll tell you about the secret ninja tool that is actually funny. OK, right. So most people don't realise that in the samurai, the Navy was really quite important, but we just ignore it because it's not like they say, broad ship to broadside to broadside shooting ships. And it's not Trafalgar. It's not the Battle of Trafalgar. It's not Nelson. It's not, you know, the Mary Rose sinking. It's just like, oh, they did some ship stuff. So there's famous samurai clans like the Murray clan and the Kuki clan. And you Bujinkan people should really be putting your ears up at there. Because if I remember rightly, the Kuki clan are Bujinkan orientated. And they are very much, uh, if I've got the right clan here, associated with water. That's for you guys to follow up. Now, samurai ships are based on Chinese vessels, like most things Japanese, and they're actually specifically known as junk rigs. Now, you get different types of rigs. You get Bermuda rig, fore and aft rig, schooners. You know, you get lots of types of ships, but these are called junk rig, and it's the way that the mast and the sail are rigged together. You don't have to worry about it, but just realise they are different to the types of ships that you get in the West, and they still use this junk rig style in China today. Right, so we're going to talk about the secret ninja rope at the end. Okay, so the evolution of um, naval warfare. We know that everything evolves. Sometimes it goes backwards. But we know that the Mongols brought over um, their ships in the great... You know what I mean? You've got to imagine the waves going. The samurai looking out in the north of Japan, roughly the north, and the Mongols are invading. Now, probably Japan at War has a lot about this on his channel, but you've got... To, I've heard or I've read that they actually used to put human victims on the front of the ships, the Mongols, in barbed wire. How true it is, I don't know, but that's awesome, isn't it? <laughs> Over the waves, and they came with gunpowder. Now, um, Scott, in his video, goes through all the gunpowder weapons, the here, the different stuff. And I have got a scroll that I have yet to publish. It's all translated, and it's got all the different sea weapons. I'm really holding back on that. Um, but the point being is, imagine... Right, you imagine you're at war and there's big ships there, there's small ships, everything's going around. There's arrows and rocks flying through the air and little like ramps have gone across and people have gone across. If you fall on that water, if you've got to swim with armour on or die. Um, but at the same time, you're getting people stripping off their armour. Yeah. And you're getting people divers it's like swimmer of the watch and all that sort of stuff. But they've got chisels and they're diving in. They're, coming, they're trying to prise planks out from the boat. You've got people catapulting in explosives but you've also got people trying to capture each other with the tools and drag you in and you've even got suicidal samurai who are just gripping people and jumping in with them fully armored and saying right we're both going to valhalla but in you go now imagine that you know what i mean you're in and it's multi-level do not think like this it's not like this 
It's multi-level. People are putting things on. There's um, turrets here. There's towers and s things looking down. So the, the so in the old days when you're talking about Trafalgar and all that and Nelson, you've got to look up into the mass. Everybody thinks broadsides are side to side. You've got to look up in the mass. It's the same in Japan. You've got towers and fortifications on the ships. Big ships, smaller ships. It's not this side by side, tink, tink, tink. It's like bam, 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 all over the place, yeah? So what we're going to do now, so you basically got floating formations um floating sorry um war fortifications for, for <laughs> that was easy for you to say mr cummins um floating fortifications now um normally these ships have low mobility so let's go to the different types of ships uh don't worry too much about the names like scott's got some awesome names out there i've put some names in the back of the other one and basically you get the main warship the big ship yeah that's there usually them and a couple of big ones normally that's your flagship of your fleet yeah you get scout ships all right like the best way is to go back to star wars always go back to star wars it tends to be right Star Destroyer, right? That's your castle back home, right? Star Destroyer is your castle. Out there, your, um, the, um, oh, no, sorry, idiot. Death Star. Death Star is your castle, right? Death Star. Mm, that's no moon, right? Death Star is your castle. Star Destroyers are your big ships at war. They're going out like that but off of them come smaller ships yeah and you get smaller ships that are fighting and then you get tiny scout ships so obi-wan's like that that fighter couldn't have got out this far on its own must have got lost in a convoy okay imagine japan the ships are out there small boat you shouldn't be here what are you doing here it's clearly a warship you know because just on the it's a scout boat so you're like han solo's like let's turn this around you know what i mean They've got us in a tractor beam because you're like, that boat has just spotted us and it flees back and it gets the main fleet and they all start coming up. So you get stealth ships who come up at night in raids. You get scout ships. Then you get the big warships. And you also get like what you term as a frigate, the middle-sized ships. And they all work in unison. And then you get different types of formations. So, so? so that's a type of cow, isn't it? So... Like, for example, you get X formation in ships, you get circle formation, you get square formation. These are all Japanese tactics. So you get like the main ship at the middle, X formation. What they'll do is like break off right, break off left, and they come back around and they all come online together. You get circle formation, which is when you're all over, you spread and then you go right, go back to circle formation and everybody comes into circle formation. And then you can make up to the square formation. These are all done in sailing and it's done because you wouldn't believe how complicated Western sailing is. Yep. So you got that. Um, and but you also have supply and logistics ships. So we actually do know that you needed supply ships out there. But of course, they were also supply ships for real armies doing real battles on the land. So if you know in the Hobbit, right, when the five armies are coming together, the elves, if you didn't know this, actually march up the side and um, go round Lake Town up to the top, up to Erebor, the Lonely Mountain. But they send ships with cargo on it to re meet them there because it's much easier to send weapons and stores by ship than it is to carry them over land much easier and then all you got to do is unload them at the other side and then they fight so uh, and if you're interested i have a book called the Co the ultimate unofficial guide to tolkien's world go and get it on amazon it's there right if i was if i had more time i'd put a picture on the screen but i don't right so um you, so basically, you've got all these different ships going on, and that brings you back to the idea of we're there with multiple layers and multiple things going on, fire going on, torches going on. But that you've also, and have you seen by Stephen Nogiris, you've got all the different symbols and elements, the walls, the curtains, everything being used there and then. But you also get the esoteric stuff. So, for example, you cannot use a gong at sea. OK, it's like bong, like we use bells, ships, bells. You would never use that in China and Japan because uh, metal is the element of yin and water is the element of yin. Yin is a non-aggressive 
feminine element, which means too much yin means you're taking away the masculine war energy with like hatchy man there and the battle flags unfurled. So you don't use it. So you would hear conch shells and you would hear drums. You would have flags going up and signal flares and fires. You would not be hearing any metal instrument gongs, nothing like that. They don't use them at Stingy. Also, you would get Kuji. The drums would be doing Kuji. Boom, 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 boom. Depending on how you do Kuji. Rin, hyo, to, sha, kai, jin, retu, zai, ten. So sometimes the Chinese go, Rin, uh, hyo, to, sha, kai, jin, retu, zai, zen. But sometimes it's Rin, to, sho, ka. Rin, hyo, to, sha, kai, jin, retu, zai, zen. Sorry, I missed the hyo then. So, but you know what I mean? You either do it in four, five, or you've got nine in a row. And there's drums going on and stuff like that. Yep. So you've got all that going on and then you've got departing. So you've got him coming up to ships, departing from ships. All these types of things are happening inside of it. And not only that, you've got two crews on each ship, two crews. You've got the crew and you've got the Marines. So it's the same as the Navy and the Marines. It's exactly the same. The Navy are there to steer the ship. The Marines are there to be landed off the ship. Yep. I don't know about American Marines, but Royal Marines... Royal Marines, right? Royal Marines, they actually uh, were originally in their red coats and they used to be called bootnecks. And the Navy land, even though the Navy lads fought, most of the time you took your army with you and they became Marines. And then, of course, the Americans made Marines, I think, from our concept of Marines. I'm not sure anyone there about modern military history can do that. So you've got fighting men and you've got naval men. Everyone's fighting, but you've got specific people fighting and keeping the ship going and other people who are really fighting. Do you know what I mean? So you've got lots of movement between ships and you've got lots of people falling in the water. Now, as I said, and they've all, all, all of us have said it, you fall in the water in full armour, you're buggered, right? And this is going to get me on to something else that I wanted to talk about. Each one of them, uh, my, my collaborating friends, are correcting what they say, but I think it can be misleading. And what they say is, it's, not, it's coastal warfare, yeah? You're not going out to sea and you're not like... You know, it's a sailor's life, his life on me. Or, you know, all I can see is the deep blue sea, sea, sea. It's, you're in land. But that, and, and they are 100% correct. They are not wrong. They are 100% correct. But that is misleading you to think it's safe. <laughs> it is not safe. You only need to be half a mile at sea. In fact, you only need to be um, a couple of metres out at sea. Off your feet. And you're suddenly your bum old giving it that. I have nearly been caught in a riptide going out. And I actually had ripped muscles. I think they were ripped muscles. It took weeks to heal because I passed, paddled so fast to get in back to land. Because I could feel it pulling me out. And I was at the very end of England. There was no getting out. I was no out. And I was like, I forced myself back in and I ripped my muscles, I think. And you are going like this. A couple of hundred metres at sea, you got no chance. You've got no chance. If that tide's going the wrong way, people don't understand tide. You can swim all you like and you can look like you can be a powerful swimmer. That tide's taking you back 10 times faster than you're going forward. You can go forward. I've been at sea in a tall ship with my sails full on you, going at six knots, but you get actual speed over land was zero. Yep. Speed I am going, six knots. Speed over land, zero. That means that's going six knots. We're going six knots. And suddenly, I'm stood still. And we've spent days going speed all the land zero. Yep. Then you hit the different tide or something changes. And next thing you're going 18 knots. You're going eight knots that way. You know, so I've rowed it. I've done it as well. I've rowed for four hours, five hours for one mile because speed over land was nothing. So when you're out in coastal waters, it doesn't matter. <laughs> A lot of sailors never used to learn to swim, allegedly, because it didn't matter. You're going to get crashed on the rock. If you go in, you're going in. You've either just got to be able to get back to the boat and get on or you're dead. So it's the same in Japan. So just be careful when you have this idea of like, it's only coastal. It is bloody dangerous and you're going to die. So yes, they developed different methods of swimming in armour. But of course, you had some fantastic swimmers in Japan. In fact, Japan is probably the land of the people who swim the most. Um, they have like their famous divers, the pearl divers. They have great swimmers out in Japan. They're, that's probably one of the things they're really, really good at. And um, they would have had, you know, naval people swimming all the time. The other thing that nobody really clocks or thinks about is the stars. Nobody's mentioned that this month. The stars in sailing are phenomenally important and weather law is phenomenally important. So when you read the Bansen Shukai, the Book of Ninja, and it's talking about star law and all that, and 
actually the people that really are pretty good and i'm not sure if he mentioned the Banton Shukai, but he definitely mentions it in um the natori system is it says you want to talk about stars or you want to talk about weather law talk to a sailor even the lowest of the low sailors like yeah, yeah we'll use that there and we're going north there you go yeah, 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 that happens. The weather's coming in. Yeah, yeah, that happens then. It is sailor's life is life for me. Get there, yeah? Now, the other one is also if the ship is on fire. Fire is used so much and then gunpowder is burning. There's horses on the deck or there'll be horses in storage. There'll be all sorts of stuff going on and it'll be really bad. And what uh, they've all talked about is always bridges. You have these bridges that clamp on and click on and then you also get lift up things that people are shooting out of. It's basically a castle on the water it's the same as western ships originally were castles the forecastle and the after castle yeah the forecastle the front of the ship is four castle and the after castle fore and aft because they were originally castle shaped which are called crenellations crenellations one of the best words in english and uh, when me and my friend learned that word it was like hmm You'll notice the crenellations on that building are quite suitably nice and that was it, it was the word for the month then um so then, so basically you've got a lot of drowning, a lot of fire, a lot of killing, a lot of stones, a lot of things hitting the side, and you've got a lot of tools on board. Now, so we're coming to the end of the video. Scott talked about the tools, and in the document that I've got translated, it gives you... So what's great is about the Natori system, which is the Book of Samurai system, if you need it. What's great about the Natori system is it gives you those bits of information that are sort of missing. So it says, when you use these grabbing tools, which is what Scott shows you, the grabbing tools... He says, normally, with them, you can push up and push them off. So, especially hooks. So, if somebody hooks onto you, all you have to do is pull yourself forward and hook off. So, you know, even barbs, you can rip your clothes. You know what I mean? So, um, more on the land, capture tools are normally done by two or three people. You're ramming them in, twisting them up. But on sea, you don't really have, you can't surround the person. So, what happens is you hook them like that in the clothes and they just go, get off. So, what Isu Sensei says in the Tony Masazumi, which I shouldn't be giving this stuff out, is you go in, you hook, but you hook and come round, and then you lever up. So your hook, your bare hook, doesn't go this way. You hook in and go up, and then you can use it leverage off the off the gunnel like that. You pull up because they cannot pull themselves up in full armor and in, in, or whatever they've got. Unhook themselves and they get off. So and then what you do is pull back. So you've got to stand a meter back, have a longer weapon, hook, pull up over, brace yourself, and run backwards. Dead. Blah. let them go in the water unhook pull it off or throw the thing in you know whatever you're doing so that is one of the secret skills of natori and if you want to join natori you can do at my website just uh click in the comments below and i'll tell you how to do it right um so and that leads us to the very end which is the secret ninja gear right so when i first published the book of samurai which had the I think it's heiko jodo in or heiko yoho we had this um one of the scrolls he says under this part of the side of the armor here yeah you have a bag with what's called the shinobi nawa the ninja rope okay right ninja rope this is why you don't you have to be really careful on how you translate it's not ninja rope it's a hidden rope but it becomes known as the shinobi nawa because it is there and it says, four scrolls on, it says, how to use your shinobi nawa at sea, your ninja rope. Okay, are you ready for this? It's genius. Right, so get your ninja rope out. It's not a ninja rope, it's a hidden rope. But you get it out, you go to the back of the ship, and there's a railing, you hook it onto the railing, hold on, maybe tie it round you, and you have a shit out of the back. <laughs> That's a secret ninja rope. So just to be clear, shinobi nawa means hidden rope not ninja rope and it's hidden because it's under your armor here and you use it because it's easy to get on you hook it on tie it round yourself so you don't fall over in your armor pull your skirts up have a dump over the back do your stuff and then go back and oh no again put it back in yeah so there you go when i saw I was, oh oh look miyako because she was translating like, miyako she know me now she know me now she's like oh there you go Anthony. so that's the the secret of ninja stuff and lastly um question for any of you samurai buffs out there now william adams who came over and ended up being a hatamoto under tokugawa iyasu had a ship built a western ship built by japanese shipbuilders to a western style crewed by the japanese and whoever was left out of samurai williams crew whatever happened to that ship whatever happened to it 
It's a shame it isn't still around. Right, guys. Click the links below. Do not miss out. You must subscribe to Stephen Nigeria's Tadagenji. His video is excellent. And you must subscribe to um, Scott from the Shogunate channel. Now, you uh, from Sengoku Studies channel. You've already subscribed to Nick, let's be honest. Because he's the god of YouTube. Right, okay. Right. See you later, guys. Don't forget, you can get yourself a copy of um, my Tolkien book. You can get yourself a copy of my Book of Samurai series. Get yourself a copy of the Book of Ninja series. You can do all that. Just basically go on Amazon, search, search Anthony Cummins, and it's all there. Let me know your thoughts down below, and uh, I will get to it when I can.